Welcome fellow wine lovers, this is the Wine Ghost Podcast. I'm Mate Vash, a certified sommelier and seeker of hidden stories behind the most mysterious drink in history. For more information or direct contact, please look for the Wine Ghosts on Instagram and Facebook. But now, please grab a glass, get comfortable and listen to how the day's ghosts get out of the bottle. The 25th episode features another outstanding wine wizard from Swabia, Baden-Württemberg, southern Germany. Johann Beurer's Rieslings and Lambergers are true benchmarks, site-specific, terroir-driven, meshed by feet, brought to life by native yeast. The Beurer wines have been cultivated organically since 2004 and then became a leading force in the Baden-Württemberg movement in Württemberg. You can learn about various sandstone types like Schilfsandstein or Stubensandstein and how they affect the vines. Johann justifies why biodynamic vines have a stronger immune system, explains the philosophy behind his wine museum and the probable reasons why his long macerated Rieslings gave us goosebumps. Johann is an amusing and a truly knowledgeable winemaker, so it was a real pleasure to spend an afternoon with him in his exceptional vineyard, cellar and tasting room. We've recorded this episode in the shop of the winery, therefore the recording was often a bit disturbed by thirsty customers, so the cutting was not the simplest this time. But please only take these occasional foreign German voices as a sign of customer trust and the sound of local terroir. You can also watch a short video capturing the mood during our afternoon visit on the Wine Ghost YouTube or Instagram channel or another one where Jochen explains their different terroirs and vineyards from between his vines. But now, please clap that glass of Riesling and listen to the wine wizard. So, sorry, the introductory part was a bit too noisy, so we're gonna jump right in with the first wine. So listen to Johan. Okay, so we, first we tried the estate wine, and it was a, a big surprise, that was the first one we tried. And it was also really white flowery and really refreshing. Um, starter what you said it's a beautiful wine just to drink it's the slip slip wine the breakfast one the breakfast one sorry <laughs> so can you just tell us about this vintage and about this wine yeah for me it was uh, 2019 was a real good vintage we had uh, good high quality healthy healthy vineyards healthy grapes mm -hmm. and and so we can uh, a little bit um, decide to when we go to the vineyard to for harvesting and uh, so it was really really cool it was a, a hot period in in the in summer okay but i think with our vineyard working with uh, we um, don't put off too too much leaves and so we we keep the wrestlings always more in shadow and mm -hmm. working always with a little bit smaller taller um, wall uh, leaf wall okay uh, and so for us we had a good aromatic okay in the 2019 was not too hot not too burnt yeah. the aromatic and it was for us a perfect year i think so yeah. uh, so we got a little bit more freshness than in the yeah, 18th sure. And really perfume, really white flowery nose. Yeah, also. it's a fresh. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but it's mostly mostly in the in the wines we we bottled first in the year. So, uh, normally the the estate wines, the white label wines, okay. the breakfast wines, yeah. they we we bottle them uh, in spring. Okay. And so because they we keep a little bit more the hand on the fermentation, mm -hmm. also on the nature fermentation, keep a little bit more the hand during the the winter, mm -hmm. and uh, so we we get them dry in, in, in spring. Not all, mm -hmm. because we do a second and a third bottling of the East State Riesling all year, because there are a few barrels, a few tanks are still fermenting. Um, and so in the first bottling, there is always a bit more fruity mm -hmm. and freshness and mm -hmm. uh, a little bit uh, really good lively. Mm -hmm. So, really well. And then we tried the, if you could try maybe the one of them. Again, the Gips Kuiper. Yeah, yeah we, have, we have the three wines in the, we separate by the soil and so it's more the, the village wines, mm -hmm. and so the, the next level wines. They, we have the grey labels, you can also say it's for it's a lunch wine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we, we uh, separate them by the soil. Okay. So we have three different, we have the Gips Kuiper, we have the Schilfsandstein and we have the Kieselsandstein. Okay. And uh, so we have different minerals, mm -hmm. different altitudes. Mm -hmm. In the win from the vineyards, mm -hmm. from the different vineyards, and different expositions. Mm -hmm. So uh, it shows you always not just the soil, yeah. 
But it shows you also the, the, the different from the microclimate in the vineyard. Yeah. And so the Gibbs Kolber is more facing more to yeah. east southeast. Yeah. Uh, it gets a little bit, a little bit early in the afternoon um, cooler. Yeah. Because the sun is going behind the, yeah. the hill, uh, behind the forest. And then uh, you get always, uh, for me, a little bit more whiter character, a little bit more whiter flowers, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more freshness. Uh, it feels like a little bit more acidity than the yeah. iris. And uh, so it's um, always, for me, the uh, fresh minerality Riesling. Mm. That was this. Yeah. And then the, the next step is the Schilsenstein. Mm. Schilsenstein is from the other side of the small valley yeah. here. It more, uh, the vineyards are more facing to west, southwest. Mm -hmm. uh, also, yeah, more directly to west. Mm -hmm. So you have more the sun in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, get a little bit long warmness in the, in the vineyard. And uh, shows you always um, more yellow colors, okay. uh, a little bit a good structure, a little bit more, more. I think it's a little bit more shoulders and muscularity. Uh, yes. yeah. Muscles inside this yeah. this wine shows you, yeah. but from the from the analytics is nearly the same. Uh -huh. okay. It's just different from the microclimate in the vineyard, the soil. Uh -huh. At a Stein you have no uh, no limestone inside. Mm -hmm. There was high. No limestone inside, and Gibbs we have a lot of limestone mm -hmm. and gypsum yeah. mm -hmm. in this in this soil. Okay, cool. cool. And then maybe if you could, uh, can I try again the the Kiesel Sandstein? Yeah. Hi. Mm -hmm. The one without the filter. Filtration. Uh, also, that's what the room filter, right? It's unfiltered, yeah. yeah Kiesel Sandstein. So it's um, fermented in in twelve hundred liter barrels. Mm -hmm. So the Kiesel sunshine is a very strong sandstone. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of um, a lot of minerals inside. It's uh, it's also dolomite mm -hmm. inside this this soil, <coughs> and from the higher altitude, it's around three hundred eighty meters above the sea. Okay, you have um, a little bit a slowly a ripeness. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a slowly growing in this in this area, and mostly you have forest around. And so the forest brings you also uh, cool air down. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit. A little bit cooler in the in, during the night, mm -hmm. the vineyards, and you have also uh, always a little bit more windy, windy vineyards in this altitude. But I think that would be interesting in a restaurant. Also, fun wine pairings, I think, because yeah. of the sweetness and really a lot of weight to it. Uh, uh, uh. And in terms of um, sugar, how much? There's this is uh, this is real dry because it's unfiltered, oh. so um, we have no yeah. second fermentation yeah. in the in the in the bottle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's um, unfiltered, and so we have uh, no sugar left. Uh -huh. yeah. hmm. oh, nice. oh, it tastes like a little bit sweetness. Yeah, yeah. kind yeah. of sticky, a little yeah. bit like waxy, but more like this burnt honey aroma. Not Okay. Not not sugary, but it's mm. really like a honey-like. Very nice. Mm, now I will show you the the eighteenth, the row of the eighteenth. Okay. Okay. We yeah. can talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just one moment. I have. So you can feel a little bit different from the the vintages. Uh -huh. So two thousand eighteen. Eighteen gibbs Kolber, yeah. So mm. you can feel it's a little bit more warmness from the from the vintage, and so our, every our wines are always. Um, like the vintage, yeah. So they have a little bit more warmer colors in this, in the nose, and mm. but you have a good good palate. You have a good balance and and also freshness inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so okay. That's the best wine tasting. Though, that <laughs> if you get goosebumps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, I think, a good measure of quality that the aftertaste is fruity, not acidic. So now come these warm, really ripe fruits after, after the first yeah, couple yeah, of seconds. Yeah. yeah. And then, but the acidity stays and also this, and this weight of palate and also this minerality on the side, but it's really ripe and getting riper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, our normal uh, normal system, you know, because we we always looking for the ripe grapes, and, and um, we don't like to to have the, the unripe grapes with uh, more acidity, when uh, unripe acidity, yeah. and this is the the big problem, yeah. I think. So yeah. for different for the so. uh, for the wines at the moment.
And you also told me you are always the last who harvest. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh, but you can feel a little, you can feel the vintage, but you can, can uh, it's not too too high in alcohol. Yeah. It's not too 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 um, yeah too overripe yeah. or, or not dull or yeah. something. It's just just ripe. Yeah, yeah. It's just the yeah. best. Really good. And do you also always these them or these them? Yeah. No, no, never, never. We don't these them. We these them a few red wines. Okay. But no white wines. Huh. And we mesh just always by feet. Always whole buster. Whole buster. Whole cluster with meshing by feet. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And how do the um, clusters look like when you harvest them? So the stems. The is stems the are nearly ripe, not all, but uh, the most the most stems are ripe. So because they they starting to to go into wood uh -huh. at the at the beginning, uh -huh. and that's also the sign for 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 ripeness. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's also another interesting. What you said when you start the harvest, if you see the nature is turning to yeah. turning into yellow, right? Uh, and, and not into yellow when they they starting to 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 change the color. Okay. Yeah. Not directly. When when they are yellow, we are in the middle. I hope okay. so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, for the estate for the estate wrestling, we have a maturation time. Um, sometimes one night. Okay. Or we go directly to the press. So it's not too long for the maturation time in yeah. the in the estate wrestling. Mm -hmm. But for the others, we have four, five, six days maturation okay. time. Uh, for example, the um, uh, 2017, the Gieselsandstein yeah. and also the Kipskoiper, I think it had, or I had more minerally sensation yeah. in the mouth. But this one is... Yeah, l like a little bit, a yeah. little bit, so... Uh, yeah, yeah it's the vintage and now it takes, uh, it needs time, these wines needs time to, yeah. and to, also to open to up open. some oxygen, right? You, you, would you also suggest to... To decant it? Decant? Um, yeah, I'm not so the fan of decanting for the Rieslings. Uh, for me, um, maybe it uh, you can shake them a little, wake up yeah. in, in the bottle and bring it one times this or bring it in a small carafe okay. or, or bring it in the next bottle. That's for me the best okay. reason, uh -huh. but not in a big decanter. Mm -hmm. So always mm -hmm. in a small decanter mm -hmm. just uh, to start the wine. Mm -hmm. Just to aerate it. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, that's very important. So we already talked about in the in the car, but maybe some general questions about the, your estate. And you also started in 2014 with the organics. 2004. 2004. Sorry. Four, 2004. Yeah. We started with the organic because we we ferment the wine since 2003 completely with nature yeast. Mm -hmm. So um, for me. It was uh, about thinking when you spray in the vineyard against the fungus with uh, any chemicals yep. and systemic uh, fungicides, you you spray also against your your uh, yeast yeah. in the vineyard. And so we we start to to working organic in the vineyard, uh, step by step. And uh, then we we feel it's better for the quality. Mm -hmm. You feel a better balance inside the vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, more healthy grapes and more lively grapes that's yeah. very important and um, then after the uh, few years we we start do the first steps in um that's the first steps in, in biodynamic mm -hmm. so i get a good inspiration from a good friend of us in in france from barmes bücher okay and uh, i i like his vineyards and uh, loved his vineyards and so we we going step by step to the biodynamic working and uh, so mm -hmm. for us is at the moment uh, the biodynamic working is very important so because in the in the weather confusions at the moment so the the biodynamic vineyards i think they're a little bit more relaxed about too hot w uh, years too hot periods and, mm. and too wet periods mm. stronger immune system maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then um, you was which, which kind of preparates do you use in the vineyard? We we work with the five hundred. I will be <laughs> sorry. Uh, we work with the five hundred. And that's the cat, the seventeen year old cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we work with the five hundred and with the five hundred one in the vineyard, and so with the compost preparates also. And but we also um, spraying teas in vineyard, uh, horsetail teas. Uh, nettle tea, um, 
willow teas and all the stuff and so we're looking for our for vineyards that they they keep healthy they keep stronger and um, find a good balance inside yeah. for, from the preparates and what is the difference between the 500 and the 501 the 500 is the the the, the cow shit in the in the the horn yeah and so it's good for the for the um, um for the soil for the activity activities in mm -hmm. the in the soil for the micro microorganisms in the soil and uh, the 501 is for the for the leaves it brings you a little bit more energy to yeah. the leaves and more more the sunny the sunny effects in the in the vineyard uh -huh. but that's not Cow poo, but what, what it is was a, it's a um, um, like kiesel 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 stein. It's, uh -huh. it's like a powder powder uh -huh. of um, silits. Okay. silits. Hmm. And uh, these are the two preparates what you use, or yeah, okay. So what we have in the this is now? Uh, eighteen kiesel sandstein. Okay. So what was the, what are, what were the general differences between these two wines in terms of vintages? So 2018 and 2019. To say, um, the 19, the 18 was uh, quite dry. Mm -hmm. we, we had not this dryness in the in in 19. In a few regions there was also dry, but here we have always a little bit rain and okay. was okay. Well, a little, little bit more relaxed. Um, in 18 we have um, quite a real hot year. Okay. Uh, hot hot um, harvest time also, and mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, yeah a little bit more. Higher, higher um, ripeness, mm -hmm. a little bit lower acidity. Yeah, I can also feel this after the 17s. Yeah. Both of these wines have more, also warm, more warmth from the in the nose as mm -hmm. well, almost on the ecstatic side. But it's really ripe, uh, really ripe pomaceous fruits and ripe apricoty flavors. So this is also unfiltered riesling, the the 2018 Kiesel Sandstein. Kiesel Sandstein, it's uh, so. Yeah, it's so, so funny to to um, age them in barrels, uh -huh. so you get more more serious character in this wine, more settled down the wine, yeah. and brings you a real real um, grounded grounded wine. <laughs> yeah, but it it's really just uh, so high expectation. You also do some like some measurement in terms of dry extract and this kind of thing. Yeah, we we have uh, Maishe, um, we have the Maishe. Uh, here with the, with the stems, also yeah. it's always the same method, meshing yeah. by feet, maceration time. Mm -hmm. Mostly in Kiesel Sandstein, we have uh, around five six days maceration mm -hmm. time. But I imagine that these wines could age as well. So yeah, no? they they need they need to age. What, what, because what is the oldest that you drank maybe? Oh, uh, Nikolai Nikolai's birthday was two thousand one, and we. Last week at Friday, yeah, the eighth of May, yeah. and uh, we taste some two thousand one. Oh, it was good. It's still fresh, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, because I can feel this is, I think, really characteristic to this region that it has a lot of fruit flavors, but also this ripe, so like jasmine or almost this ripe yellow flowery flavors, yeah, yeah. but also enough acidity, and it's, a, it's really. But the acidity is not too high. No, but the sensation we... is good. So it's refreshing still. So it's not dull or something. Yeah. Not overripe. Yeah, so yeah. the acidity didn't burn out in the vineyard. It's it's refreshing. Yeah. It's always always a kind of freshness inside. Oh, beautiful. And why why did you choose this method? Or why why did you I liked I liked the I liked the the character of the when you have the tannins also yeah. in the wine. Also in the white wine, uh -huh. and this for me, it's more complexity. It's more, yeah. You can, yeah, so it's you can almost. eat them, yeah. yeah. But this, I will show you one moment. Okay. I don't know if it's still here. And now I, I told you about the colors okay. in the, the first yeah. vineyard. Yeah. This is so. This is this is um, Schilfsandstein. Mm -hmm. I didn't show you the Schilfsandstein. This is the Schilfsandstein over there, the wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the wall is, there is no limestone inside. So you have a bit lower pH. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, uh, it's a soft sandstone. Okay. And it shows you always a little bit more this character, more, more, a little bit smoother. Yeah. A little bit more yellow color for me, so it's more for me. <laughs> uh, but you have a right good uh, minerality on the on the side. 
Yeah, it's too. It's like little stone stains in the side mm -hmm. of my mouth. And the, the acidity is not so striking than the, the mm -hmm. first one was. Yeah. It's a bit smoother. But I think for the, from the analytics, it's, um, it's the same. Uh -huh. But from the feeling, it's... Yeah, it's different. And also, it's... I don't know which smell it is, but... If you could really smell like a wet... I don't know if it's sandstone or what kind of stone, but when you go into a thermal spa, you know? Um, I don't know if you have ther a ther thermal spa, spa yeah. like... Um, you know when you have this healing water, yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. a lot in Hungary and yeah. if you go inside then you get this feeling, okay. it's just a thermal smell. So it's also, also the same, it's 11.5 alcohol and, and so it's really easy, a light from alcohol, yeah. but a lot of a good rich palate. And, and really extract, so a lot of extraction, you can almost bite in the wine. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really long after taste, but it's stingly sensation taste, it's almost this really rocky or minerally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This taste. But also it has some meat palette weight, so from the some? from the meat palette weight, yeah. so from the phenolics and the, the extraction yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. And this was a seventeen vintage, right? A seventeen, yes. So we, we bottled at the moment we bottled already the 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 Gibbs Koiber is in um, to sale at the moment. But Schilsenstein eighteen is not a, at the moment. It's for me. It's not. Uh, I will show you. Okay. And then he just jumped up and brought the next beautiful wine, Kieser Sandstein. So listen to this one. It's fermented in, in big barrels, 1200 liter barrels. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's in barrel without sulfur for 15, 15 months. Okay. After them, we bottle them unfiltered. And so it's, uh, it's a little bit another stylistic from uh, then the Gibbs Coil and Schilsenstein. Kiesel Sandstein. Kiesel Sandstein. And, uh, 17, yeah. 2017, how was this vintage? It was uh, also, we had, um, in 2017, we had frost. Okay. And then, uh, but the quality was real nice and, and real high quality wines. Mm -hmm. Not that high in alcohol, but uh, from, the, from the aromatic and from the ripeness was really high. And so yeah. I love the 17s. It's a little bit more freshness, a little bit more crispy in the, in yeah. the taste. But this wine has a lot of spiciness too. So the last two, uh, we tried the Gibbs Koiper and Schilfsandstein. Yeah. And they were more that minerality or almost this rocky element to it, but this has more spice. Wow. Yeah, but it's really ripe fruit aromas. Mm. Maybe so it is. a bit less so, acidity as well. So, so low in, sul in sulfur. Uh -huh. So you have a little bit more the uh, the, the yellow colors, yeah. the oxidate notes and so. But I... In the palate, in the mouth, there is a, there's a lot of uh, minerality yeah. on side and the yellow colors, the ripe fruit. Yeah, almost, almost yeah. on this cooked side. So, yeah, yeah. almost cooked fruit. This is barrel sample from the Chi Okay. So, we uh, will bottle them next, next week, I think so. And so, then you have the whole line in 2018. So this is a uh, barrel sample, it's open, uh, but maybe you can, we can taste it. It's the Chi Chi, it's the vineyard where the small, small house was. Uh -huh. And uh, it's a warmer, warmer vineyard than the Junge Schwaben. 2018 too, right? 18, yes. Wow, that, but that's, that's a lot of texture and warmth yeah. inside. And that's really almost, really this cook, almost dried fruit are really, wow. Mm, it's really nice, a lot yeah. of extract. I like the yeah. I like the line from the eighteen. Yeah, I like it because you can see the from the Gibbs Coeval shelf Kiesel and yeah. so it goes really straight on and Wow. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> but okay. there's so much complexity and yeah, so yeah. much layers. And it's really the viscosity is really low. So you can feel also the we have uh, beautiful Gavriel glasses yeah. here in front of us, and you can see that the viscosity is so low. But uh, the alcohol, how much alcohol is? Oh, I don't know really. Uh, I think it's twelve point <laughs> five to between twelve point five and thirteen. But well, it's not bottled at the moment. But it's even though the alcohol is quite low, that it's just really yeah. like a creamy <laughs> soup. Okay. So um, when will it come out? Uh, I think we, we will show at Wiesbaden in September okay. or August, end of August, I think so. 
and then I don't know really. I think uh, beginning of next year, two thousand twenty, at uh, twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is wow. <laughs> we are always in the in the GTS. We are always one year later than the others. So it's really necessary for our wines to because uh, mostly when they when they they show they, they will show the, the 2019 mm -hmm. I think in in August in Wiesbaden okay and and then we show the 18 okay we always a little bit later so we always work a little bit other than the others <laughs> yeah but if it works for you then it works for you yeah so because. You you can feel in the uh, Schildsandstein and Kieselsandstein 18. Mm -hmm. They're so young you can't drink them now. Yeah, true. So for, for the best the best uh, vintages at the moment I think is a 17 mm -hmm. to drink mm -hmm. or 16 for mm -hmm. example. Hmm. And um, maybe just to differentiate between the Schildsandstein and the Kieselsandstein in terms of what it gives maybe to the wine and how it. Uh, gives to the wines character and also in the vineyards how it uh in the vineyards the vineyards are in the in the schildsandstein uh, some younger vineyards also inside the kieselsandstein is uh, just old vineyards okay and um, we have later harvesting in the kieselsandstein okay so higher altitude vineyards and so they show you always you can harvest them older so you have to go from step to step during the harvest you have to start at the gipskoiber then schildsandstein and at last, uh, the the Kieselsandstein, um, the Gipskoiber Schildsandstein, they are both in fermented in stainless steel, mm -hmm. and the uh, Kieselsandstein, Junge Schwab, and the Riesling GG, they are all fermented in all the barrels. So, if you just maybe can explain this uh, project, save the grape vines a little bit, because okay. you told us in the in the field, but maybe just briefly about the project and what where the idea came from. Yeah, it was so that uh, it's a vineyard, it's uh, near our castle Uburg, and or, or ruined Uburg, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a vineyard and it was, um, there was no wines on, on it, mm -hmm. and uh, the sandstone walls was broken and uh, was a little bit damaged wine. Yeah, yeah, klar. Also, so uh, was a project, uh, then uh, we, we, you can see the, the vineyard from each house from Städten. Uh -huh. And so for me it was always uh, see the vineyard and so I saw the vineyard and think oh, okay you have to let's mm -hmm. go it, it wasn't it wasn't our vineyard mm -hmm. it wasn't a uh, colleague from here mm -hmm. and um, it goes more and more to to raspberries and and all the stuff but mm -hmm. no wines <laughs> yeah. in this vineyard and then uh, I go to the owner and and say hey let's let's let me rent the vineyard Mm -hmm. uh, I have there something in my head, a new project to to rebuild the walls and and uh, to do anything in the in the vineyard, but because it is not it isn't fair to to let this place open and there it's a it's the very exhibition place to uh, yeah, in sure. in the vineyards outside, and and so we rent first the vineyards and then we start rebuilding the wall sandstone walls and we we bought a vineyard. And after them, uh, we we talked about ah, what what varieties we should plant there, and uh, so it was for me a very special hard project. And I talked to a friend of mine, Christine Kremer. Mm -hmm. uh, she is a, she is a historian mm -hmm. and writes a, um, a exam working about old varieties in Württemberg. And so uh, I got in planning with uh, with Christine and get some old mm -hmm. varieties from Andreas Jung from the Pfalz. And so we planned over 25 different old varieties from the Middle Age, mm. uh, where the varieties were cultivated here, 1400 uh, here in Städten. Mm -hmm. So we have Hoynisch there, we have uh, Reuschling, mm -hmm. we have Putscher, <laughs> we have Adelfränkisch, okay. Kleinweiß, Kleinedel, <laughs> uh, Affenthaler. We have uh, all the different old mm. old varieties. So it's a, it's an open museum, and one part of the of the terraces vineyard, we make an old system, old fixum system with uh, three just whole wood posts, just nature working there. Uh -huh. It's a it's a museum for to show. What's uh, what was before the complete vineyards were recultivated mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. reorganized by land? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And also, I think a museum for biodiversity because we, yeah. when we were walking like this, it's every corner, every meter, another like another planet almost. <laughs> like a, a, so much flowers and herbs inside. So it's good to see how really biodynamic at, at work. Yeah, yeah. And how does it differ from from the neighboring vineyards because they were just really monoculture, but you explained as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think the, our working uh, our our job is to to work against our the monoculture because when you yeah. work all all day with with uh, with wine, yeah. uh, it's nearly a monoculture. And I think the biodynamic or no, all all the win, uh, wine farmers had to work against the monoculture. So mm -hmm. you have to let a few different herbs and, and flowers in the vineyard. Mm. You have to look for for some some space for for insects, for yeah. bees, for yeah. for also for lizards and all the all the yeah. the animals. Mm. And and so it is a, it's a project. So we have the peach trees, we have quince trees inside, we have almond trees mm. inside, we have birdhouses, insect hotels. Um, yeah, a lot of lot of different nature things. <laughs> yeah. And you also have three uh, Gigi vineyards, but two of them are red wines. Right? Yeah, we have uh, three Gigi wines. Yeah. We have one Spätburgunder. Yeah. We have one Lemberger. Yeah. And our most important is the Riesling Gigi. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because yeah. our winery is eighty percent more mostly white wine, mm -hmm. and we have a uh, lot of Riesling, mm -hmm. and so the heart uh, I think is. Uh, the Riesling. <laughs> okay. And how is your Pinot Noir in terms of taste? How would you categorize it? It's more like a Burgundian style or more extract full, more full bodied? Yeah. So uh, we are we are looking for for um, always for a fresh style of uh, Pinot and okay. um, Spätburgunder, and so it's always um, yeah. We are always looking for for a good fennel structure. Mm -hmm. We we don't mesh them. Uh, we we don't destem them. So we also work mm -hmm. uh, meshing by feet and mm -hmm. all the stuff. Get a little bit more freshness in the in the pinot. That's for me very very important. Mm -hmm. And the Lamberger, the Lamberger is the is the same style. Okay. Same style, not too hot, mm -hmm. not too not too warm characters. All always a little bit more fresh characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you treat them or you put them in used barrels? Uh, or, or? It's seventy percent used barrels, but we have always a small part of uh, new barrels for the GT uh, red wines. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The the Rieslings, there is new, no new barrel uh -huh. for Riesling. I don't like the new barrels mm -hmm. in Riesling. When we start in white wines with new barrels, there is mostly Grauburgunder. Mm -hmm. Then after them Sauvignon Blanc and, and so then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And uh, what was the consideration behind uh, doing this unfiltration? You also want to kind of experiment with natural wine later, or this? For me, uh, I don't know the 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 difference between natural wine and this one, okay. right? so, because these are natural wines for me. Yeah. So we have we are we have one one real cool natural wine, no sulfur, no. Mm -hmm. uh, but we we add a, a small quantity in in sulfur to the wines, but they all for many nature yeast. There mm -hmm. we don't add anything to the yeah. wine, and we got more unfiltered wines, and all the reds are unfiltered. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the 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 nature product is I think in in all our wines. Yeah, yeah. true. But um, uh, I will show you the, the Ohne Alles. That's okay. a really cool yeah, recipe. Okay. Just a moment. Mm. This is uh, 2016 Ohne Alles. Nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, two and a half years um, in the barrel with the berry. It's, uh, the half barrel is full with berries. Mm -hmm. and so we do two and a half years maturation time with the berries. Okay. And bottle them after the two and a half years, uh, unfiltered, no sulfur, just from the barrel in the bottle. Wow. So and this you, is... You also do pumping, so some pump overs or... Uh, yeah, we pump them, yeah. Mm -hmm. But not, uh, not the... Not the heavy one. Not, <laughs> the, uh, not the berries. Okay. Not the berries. So we, we put first, we put the berries in the barrel. Yeah. And then we pump the, the juice on it, on it. and it is. And mm -hmm. after them, there is no pumping. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we bottle them directly from from the um, with a small tube, yeah. directly in bottle. Yeah. yeah, maybe it needs some more time. But also from the color, you can tell it's it's a lot of extraction. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it's whistling. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
you can op um, let them open the bottle for three, four, five weeks. It's not a problem. It's a stable wine. It's a, um, yeah, it's long life wine. So it is, um, I, do you know um, Stefan Reinhardt? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we had we had this bottle. We have two two different varieties of the. Uh, we bottled yeah. we bottled them also with the with the seeds. Okay, <laughs> a few parts. <laughs> and and so um, yeah, for me it's also you know it's nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told you about the ripe grapes. Yeah. And ripe grapes shows you always when the seeds are brown, uh -huh. when the seeds yeah. taste nutty, yeah. not not um, not not bitter, bitter. not yeah. bitter. Yeah. And so you have uh, always the nuts in the in the mouth. And when you harvest ripe grapes, ripe seeds, ripe yeah. um, berries, uh, you can make long life wines with them. Mm. When you have unripe, it's just a short, short life for the wine. Mm -hmm. And always the, the contact, the contact with the seeds in the wine keeps the wine always fresh. So you can see the color. It's not it's not orange or, or any different. No. Uh, two dark colors for a Riesling. No, it's, it's golden. Uh, it's yeah. golden. Yeah. yeah. And this is the long contact with the seeds. Mm -hmm. The the seeds protects the wine mm. for long life. And so we, we decide to, during the bottling, we put some berries and seeds in the <laughs> bottles and keep them with, uh, with the seeds. And, and I taste with uh, Stefan Reinhardt mm -hmm. one time this, this spring in, in, in Hamburg. Mm -hmm. We taste the two different bottles, one with seeds, one uh, without seeds. And I talked to Stefan and said, hey Stefan, um, taste it at home again. Bring the, the open bottle at home and taste it next week or two weeks ago, yeah. later again. Yeah. Five weeks later, Stefan called me saying, hey, I taste the wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so fresh. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's a long life wine. Yeah. How would you describe this wine? Ah. <laughs> so for me... It's not a it's not a fresh fruit from Riesling, so you have a really really ripe when it's a, maybe it's a fruit from Riesling when you when you smell the the grapes, the, the, uh, when you smell the grapes, yeah, it's it's mm. uh, you have always not not that fruity when you smell the grapes. More you have, you have more uh, like a little bit serious character of um, it's really hard to explain in English. <laughs> yeah, from. For me, it's also hard to explain because I'm I'm looking for descriptors, but uh, I couldn't. It's really what this peely character what I get. So from, for example, like a pear peel or some kind of this phenolic mm -hmm. that you might get, but it's really ripe. And also with this, when you crush some, well, some maybe some golden apples or some kind of, but it, uh, but they start fermenting. Yeah. And this this kind of flavor mm -hmm. descriptors come to my mind when you. It's not the fresh fruit, it's not the ripe fruit, but it's all over it. And it's not cooked, but not dried. It's, it's really something interesting. Yeah. When you have the, the, the pellet in the mouth, you have a good, a good acidity. Yeah, true. You have good fennels and you, you can feel under the, your thong. Mm -hmm. you, you can feel the... It has uh, a grip. Uh, yeah, there is yeah. some minerals, I think so. Yeah. So what kind of food would you eat with it? For me, I think when, when you uh, let them a little bit more open and you decant this wine, it, it turns a little bit more to a, to a nearly to a when it's longer open to maybe a, a small sherry character, a little bit yeah. sherry character, uh -huh. and and so I I think you can have them to to uh, to humor for example or so when it's a little bit riper than. You have the salty taste, yeah, and the warmer character. I think for fish it would be nice, but not sea fish. I wouldn't take it with uh, salty fish or not wild. Or for for crepes. 
Yeah, that would be also nice. Yeah, with some moon. <laughs> yeah, some no internet? No. no. <laughs> oh, I don't know the, the, the guest. Um... And you know what? Lamb. I think that would be also Lamb? nice. Okay. Yeah. Or this kind of which is between uh, white fish and uh, or white meat mm -hmm. and red meat yeah, 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 yeah. that would be a good a good match with this because i also think that in terms of descriptors it's between a really orange wine and a really like a ripe wine so i yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's, it's really so for happy. me it's always so to to say hey the the at the moment the the hype for the for the orange wine so a lot of the, every every cooperative makes an orange wine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and for me they they have a little bit longer skin contact, yeah. and then they call it orange. And and so for me it's always when you make an orange wine yeah. or nature wine, you don't have to add any things to the wine. True. and that's the, the, for me no filtration. Also, yeah. you have to to keep them by nature, and yeah. that's that's important. Yeah. So for me, it's also the, the, the point of the sulfur is for me also, it's for me, it's the sulfur, not the, not the devil thing, yeah. you know? So I think when you work special with sulfur, not too high, just a little, mm -hmm. just there, mm -hmm. point, 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 then you, you, the sulfur, they supports you yeah. in, in, in a good wine quality. Yeah. Yeah. So um uh, we are biodynamic and so the sulfur rate is is very very mm -hmm. low yeah we are talking about like 15 20 milligrams so in total we are between i think in in drollingen we have 30 mm -hmm. 30 to 40 we have in the reds 50 mm -hmm. and some whites around 70 or uh -huh. so uh -huh. okay. maybe one year we have a little bit higher <laughs> sulfur <laughs> So what? <laughs> yeah, but no finding, I would. No finding, no. Imagine. And maybe if you could just repeat yourself, what, what in the cellar, what you told, because I think it was very interesting to hear what you described as maybe hocus pocus, but I think it's not <laughs> about the yeast and the, how is it connected maybe with the nature. And, and yeah, we, 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 feel them, we feel them since many many years that uh, there is um, that, that uh, the wines are connected with nature outside and so we we, we can see every year that that there is um, the fermentation starts in in harvest mm -hmm. and we have a very fast fermentation yeah. and then after harvesting when you go outside the vineyard yeah. the leaves are gone there um, the, the the wines are finished yeah. And uh, so you can feel in the cellar the fermentation goes slowlier. Mm -hmm. And um, when you go more and more to Christmas, it's more it's very slowly. Mm -hmm. So the, the fermentation stops nearly. Yeah. And after after the new year, after the sixth of January, the the nature starts again, and and you can feel it also at your your yeah. body. I think so, and and this is also um, maybe maybe of working. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, a little bit, little bit tired in December, and and you feel fresh in January. Yeah, and that's the same in the wines. And so we, uh, and then when when spring comes, mm -hmm. when you, when you have the spring spirit mm -hmm. outside, when you smell spring, <laughs> you, you, do you know that the the the, the smelling of, of spring when you yeah. go outside and say. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. starts and and the birds starting and the flowers starting and the greens also, mm -hmm. they the the wine start also again fermenting. Hmm. Okay, nice. I will show you the gewürz from you Maybe I can take a video. <laughs> <laughs> you have free class. <laughs> and that's a uh, spät laser. Spät laser, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I showed you the the, the vineyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, the vineyard is uh, the wines are old. The wines are like trees, and uh, so uh, for me, Gewürztraminer is a uh, really, really um, old, serious, aromatic variety. I like this vineyard over there I showed you also with the Portuguese. They they are so 
it's not the Portuguese are not a really um, what's the name I don't know you, you you don't earn a lot of money off the Portuguese win yeah so it's more it's profitable yeah it's so yeah. unprofitable it's good um, but it's more to 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 be there to see to see what what's going on with these old yeah. wines what do you think of uh, in front of in terms of taste about the Portuguese because or how would you put it in terms of body and uh, taste and I like the, the Portuguese from old vineyards okay they're really they, they show you always a kind of a light red wine mm -hmm. but it is with dark fruit yeah a dark color sorry and uh, with a, or nearly a lighter fruit also, mm -hmm. and so I like the kind of Portuguese when when they when they the wines had to be old. Uh -huh. That's really really important for the for the Portuguese to wine have to some do. depth or some earthy character maybe or why why do you think it's important to have the wines uh, to be old? The the mostly the when you have younger Portuguese vineyards, they 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 show you mostly a Portuguese wine character. There is there is no no body inside yeah so so for me the the portuguese have have uh, have to be a, a low, low yield yeah yeah and so you can get and get a body inside the portuguese wines uh -huh. and when you have old portuguese wines i the, the they they show you a body more mm -hmm. hmm. and do you also work with moon faces and the moon candles? yeah yeah very often yeah and we during pruning Okay. So we we always prune just uh, when the when the moon goes down, um, for for the biodynamic preparates also. Uh -huh. There's always uh, our preparation in front of uh, full moon. Okay. And uh, bottling also working in the wine. We're looking for more relaxed faces when the moon goes down, and uh, so we look for a few things, not all, but uh, when what's possible. And can you tell us some? What you look for, maybe when the moon is closer, when the moon, what, when what uh, when do? the moon uh, uh, there is um, when the moon is uh, go down. Yeah. So you you have the blending time, and then it's more uh, the the wines are more relaxed. Uh, the waters go more to the roots, okay. more to the soil. Then uh, we are pruning, and so we we don't cut any um, energy from the mm -hmm. from the wine, and we we. Um, when the moon goes up, we are uh, for the chi-chi chi harvesting time. When it's good for the weather, uh, it depends to the weather. When the weather is fine, then we can say, okay, this will be the first, the perfect day to harvest the chi-chi chi wines. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the chi-chi chi wines we are pruning in uh, when uh, we have fruit days. Yeah. Always, our working in the chi-chi chi vineyards is always in fruit days. Mm -hmm. So that's our, our thing to, to work there. And where, where do you learn this stuff? On the internet or you? No, I learn to talk about. It's always to 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 trade some some informations with other wineries and, and mm -hmm. yeah, to to think about a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, what do you want to take this uh, winery into the future? What what are the some <laughs> ideas? Maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I. I, I I want to have a real uh, relaxed winery. Mm -hmm. That uh, is for me very very important. So we have in the last in the past we had a lot of stress. Uh, always do 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 uh -huh. there 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 and and so for me it's working more more on the vineyard and um, I have a good good balance in the family. That's very very important. Mm -hmm. So because we are we we are family here and it's not just. Uh, production yeah. so we want to live yeah. yeah that's what i also experienced so we're sitting here actually in the i think you you live above right yeah yeah, yeah. so it just people come over but all of them seem to be friends so yeah your family it's just your daughter is here yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very important for us to it's like to, a community yeah yeah that's very so also my workers yeah yeah uh, peter marco sebastian they, we have a good balance here. Adrian, yeah. you say, so Adrian, yeah. Uh, and mm. yeah, so it's it's not a um, just a, 
at the in front, you know, just not just the front door. Yeah, true. Winery, it's a winery. You go, you can go inside. Sure. And so is. for me, it's very important to go in the vineyard and you feel good. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, I hope you you feel the, that what I think about. Yeah, we felt that. in the vineyard and uh, also when you go in the cellar. Yeah. It's all for me. One times the. Um, a visitor or wine taster uh, told me when we go to the cellar, it was, oh, I want to work now. <laughs> so, it was so, so funny <laughs> to work with, with them. And mm. this, is, this is very, very, yeah. very funny. Yeah, yeah but I got, I got the similar feeling. And also, just to, uh, so we dr drove to the, um, to the vineyards first. Also, these different exposures, but you are not so far from your home. And all all these places have like a different vibrancy, some kind yeah, of you can yeah. see from the altitude, from the wind. It's also changing, and what you can see and what what you can hear. And you also like you met a lot of people, but all of them were friends. You, you yeah, were yeah. just waving. It's very very important to the uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, but it's so good to see. It's not like uh, maybe many maybe <laughs> I will tell you. There is one guy when you don't say hi to them, yeah. you get. 30 minutes later, you got, have I do something <laughs> wrong? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. It's a good vibe. Yeah, yeah it is, so yeah, it is. I like it. It's, a, it's really good here in, the, in this area. So you, you have also a lot of, um, not tourists directly, but people, they work in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. And um, some people, uh, the most people, they, they understand what you're doing. Yeah. Maybe if you're spraying, yeah. the most people, spraying uh, uh, it's poisoning uh, 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 they uh, think uh, they thought about and then yeah and, and and but the most people they they really relaxed and they say hey, hi and uh, you have to you have to um, yeah to to show them that you are also friendly when you are strong <laughs> the people also yeah. like this when you're friendly to the people People are friendly to you, yeah. and you also show them that you are not a factory and not a wine making, uh, money making machine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that will be for maybe in future. Yeah, that's a good thing to yeah. make money. No, it's <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's, it's just something important. But, uh, but I think it's also such a shame that I, since I wasn't, uh, I, I didn't try any Württemberg reasoning before. When I also had the cur curriculum or I studied for my exams, because when you open a, an exam book or a preparation book for the for the major wine exams, you don't learn about reasonings from Württemberg. Yeah, for yeah. example, you learn okay, Rhein is a Rhein Mosel, and maybe Pfalz, but uh, maybe also Spätburg. That's a big problem. Yeah, that is. Yeah, but it's a, I think that should be changed because these are. I think we, I don't know how many wines we tried, maybe 10, <laughs> and all of them were great and uh, really speaks for the character and also the, uh, the vintage variations were great, which yeah. is not really common, but you also talked about this, like uh, this continuous fermentation, so native yeast and food stamping and really they have a unique character because they preserve the acidity, has some minerality from this tony sauce, yeah, which yeah. I didn't know, and also this fruity taste so it's re they are really complex wine and have, have a lot of favor so i was just really i just wanted to know that it's a, it yeah. was a really positive experience but it is it's a real big problem in, in germany when you go to to maybe to hamburg or somewhere else and and you say you are from Württemberg, yeah. and then you say ah yeah. and you say yeah, they're mercedes you know yeah ah, yeah, 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 yeah mercedes yeah. um <laughs> and then what's your varieties and then say you know, mostly we have wrestling uh -huh. Ah, now you have also wrestling. Yeah. Now, since 10 years or so, then you say, yeah, we have new wrestling since 750 years. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, this so. is so, so uh, confused. The people, they think in, in Württemberg there is Trollinger. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, there is um, the, the small uh, glass and, yeah. and that's all. Yeah. Sorry for that. This is, this is a book from, for about German wines yeah. for Japan, yeah? yeah. And when you you read about Württemberg, I don't know where, but 
<laughs> there, is, there, is, there is just uh, in Württemberg, there is uh, more red wines, more, more drink, uh, just drink wines and uh, a lot of wine fest, but not, it's not this, I think. Nothing so. about reasoning, yeah. right? Uh, but no wrestling, it's just uh, the more the easy drinking light red wines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, the, so that's the, the, the German Wine Institute that writes about Württemberg. Uh, that's the problem. And that you are also a VDP or VDP member. It, that's, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> this, this, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. There is mm. some. Uh, but wh why do you have Japanese books here? <laughs> 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 we have uh, my, our our sons. They uh, uh, they they spend uh, three weeks for uh, ah okay for exchange exchange uh, in Japan, and then they uh, bring them a lot of um, German wine stuff <laughs> okay. to to Japan. Yeah, some marketing. Yeah. Okay. So. Really, thank you very much for this afternoon, for yeah. these four hours. Really. Thank you. Thank you for um, being here. And I hope you I can do some good marketing in, in English for your wines, maybe. Yeah, my, my English is not, not, not that good. And, yeah. and so it's always a little bit problem. So maybe my, my, my wife, Marion, will just tell you, oh, your chances, your chances. Yeah, they are so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think you did great. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you liked this episode and you will also experience some goosebumps from the Boyer Air Wine soon. Till then, check out the videos on the Wine Ghost YouTube or Instagram channel where you can pair a face to Johan's voice, see his vineyards in a beautiful weather and learn some interesting facts about this captivating terroir. Then next Friday, you can hear Franz Weininger from Austria Burgenland, another fun podcast. Thanks for listening and cheers!